All right, Dan. All right. All right. All right. First results for our quarterfinals. Ooh. Yes. I shiver with anticipation. So people are still voting on the other one, but we have the results. Mm -hmm. So for Food Heist, our number one seed, the Gator Bonds, versus our number 12 seed, Do Not Steal the King's Potatoes. The King's Potatoes have pulled it out. Whoa. The number 12 seed has upset the number one seed. <laughs> the Gator Gourmands are out with 23% compared to 77%. It is that astonishes me. It is an overwhelming victory. But, but I need to be clear, that does not disappoint me in any way. Mm, I'm delighted it? by it. Okay. I, I love both of those. I did not expect Gator Gourmands to lose. Mm -hmm. But Do Not Steal the King's Potatoes is going to make a killer t-shirt. Yeah. If it wins the final. If so, it does, I think it of the food heist, it. it is the best t-shirt. Um, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. they're, the great maple syrup heist is yeah. good. Edelstahlkugel, good. There, people will be voting on that. Um, they have been voting on that as this goes live already yeah. for a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know the results yet, though. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, on the bad story ideas, also an upset. Ooh. Not as big a one. Titanic 2 Sink Harder with 86% has defeated. 86% has defeated Jack the Carjacking Car. Jack the Carjacking Car. Jack the Carjacking Car is out. The only one of these that already has a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> yes, someone made a t-shirt for us. Well, maybe that's why. Yeah, could be. I'm actually happy about this. I think Jack the Carjacking Car is a much better story. It's a better story. Like, to listen and, to and us talk about. Frankly, I'm like, I'm right on the edge of just writing a treatment for it. Jack the Carjacking Car. Jack the Carjacking Car. Okay, you're weird because Titanic 2 is a much better book, <laughs> right? The whole idea of like- Oh, yeah. You know, but as our discussions went, I think mm -hmm. the Jack, but it makes a much worse t-shirt. I'm so happy we don't have to figure out how to make a t-shirt of Jack the Carjacking Car because- Yeah, because that is a Fast and the Furious- Yes. Joke that would be very difficult to put on a shirt- Without getting in legal trouble. While Titanic 2 sink harder? Yeah. I mean, it just... I will say the entire time that I was reading Frugal Wizard, yeah. I had to stop almost every other page to make a note about what I would do with the Titanic version of this story. I mean, I still think we can do it, particularly if you call the book Titanic 2 sink harder. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many fun things to be mm -hmm. done with it. So. Yeah. So... Um, regardless. I even um, thought of a very disturbing horror premise for a uh, Titanic story set in the frugal verse. Well, we, um, <laughs> we, have, we have these results. Uh, we don't know what the others will be, but um, we are eagerly looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with uh, with your votes for that. So in one of your last few chances to vote. Mm -hmm. um, be part of the voting. We don't have a new one to announce today, but we will be back with the finals. The finals are coming finals right are up. finals are coming. And then the post-finals be a smackdown between, uh, between <laughs> the... Because what we're almost assuredly going to do mm -hmm. is make the best Bad Story Idea t-shirt and the best um, uh, Food Heist t-shirt. And we're going to try to have these at Dragon Steel. Mm -hmm. is our goal. Uh, but we will have a vote after that. Once we know those two, we'll start getting the t-shirts in the run. Mm -hmm. All right. In the run? In the... In the in thing development, that makes t-shirts. In the thing that makes t-shirts. Um, but then we'll have a vote for which of those we'll two. Have a, we'll make yeah. both shirts either way. Yes. But, but then we will choose a final winner. A grand champion. Yeah. Um, maybe... Which is, yeah. which is ludicrous on its face. It is. That's like saying, okay, we have someone who won the NBA championships and someone who won the Super Bowl. Yep. Now let's have them play baseball yep. against each other. That is that is what we're going to do. <laughs> I mean, what about the things we do here made you think we wouldn't do something ridiculous? Oh, no. Is it better if we just let them do the voting without the t-shirts or do we get the t-shirts and have the week before Dragon Steel the voting <laughs> and then crown the champion at our live recording session. Crown it live. Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. That would be pretty good if we could get the t-shirt designs. Speaking of ridiculous things, mm -hmm. I, I commented before we started recording, and I want to say it again now that we are recording. We have one, two, three, four, five, six people in this room. 
Other than us. Other yeah. than us. Yes. Who were all sitting on the side and who were having very serious, important, professional person kind of conversations about how they're going to make our food heist and bad story idea t-shirt things work. Yes, yes. All this arranging when the votes are happening. And uh, Dan, I, I actually looked at Dan. I said, look how far we've come <laughs> from when we sat at the magazine and mm-hmm. came up with bad ideas and everyone rolled their eyes at us and left. Yeah. Look how far we've come. It took us 20 20- Six years. And we have to pay a bunch of people. now we're here paying people to care about our nonsense. (laughs) (laughs) This is what happens when when writers become too successful. Yeah. They they, really need to thin out our ranks a little bit. (laughs) Um, So, food heist? Speaking of food heist, do you want a food heist? I do. Because... You teased me with with something very exciting. The Bergler. The Bergler is back. The Bergler is back. So have you heard of a bear nicknamed Hank the Tank? I have not. This is a bear who, for about seven or eight months Mm -hmm. in 2021, terrorized Lake Tahoe. Basically just adopted a neighborhood, broke into at least 28 homes to steal their food. Wow. Uh, Responsible for 152 reports of conflict behavior. Oh, that's how they put it when you run into yes. a bear. Conflict behavior. Conflict behavior. That bear needs to be written up to HR, apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, this was a severely food-habituated bear, which means that he was no longer afraid of people and associated them with food rather than with danger. And uh, obviously, I mean, they nicknamed him Hank the Tank. It's actually a her. They nicknamed her Hank the Tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, she would often bring three cubs with her on her okay on her jobs. Is this the Bergler's origin story? I think it has this to is, be. This right? is the Bergler's mom. Like we clearly know, um, when you say 152 conflict reports, that is yeah. absolutely the Bergler's modus operandi, mm-hmm. right? Uh, this is someone who is there sending a message, making sure that everyone knows maybe your or food is not safe. Is this the Bergler's mom? Like, this is how he was born into a life of crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, here's how we get our food. We steal it. And we, make these, we make these humans afraid. And he's like, I can, I can deal with that. I can monetize that. When would you say this was? This was uh, 2021, 2021 leading into 22. So um, the Bergler's a time traveler. Well, and the, the Hank the Tank Bear has been relocated to Colorado. Yeah. Because it was so yeah. problematic. Uh, I don't know if I buy that story. Mm. Either this is Hank the Tank's is the Bergler's mom. Or Hank the Tank took the fall. Yeah. It uh-huh. could be. She's the stooge that just mm-hmm. is like. Or mm. it could just be that this is, um, you know, we've got two Berglers out there. Or, you know, because of the three cubs, there could be yeah. a whole new sure. generation of Berglers coming. And I think that if. The burglar lets you relocate him or her mm-hmm. to Colorado. It's because they wanted to go to Colorado. All right, we've got to be on all the lookout. part of their plan. Yeah, for, uh, for bear-related crimes in Colorado to put these pieces together. See, that's the thing. The first burglar crime we reported was in, like, Steamboat Springs or something. Oh, when, what, when was that? And it was post It was post the tank. tank the Tank? Okay. Yeah. Well, the pieces are falling together. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So... Uh, no one is safe from the Bergler and the Bergler's apparent bat family of little hangers-on and apprentices and mm. mentors. And I still think that the Bergler must have been trained in that. The, I like think the Bergler's so. maybe a title that passes from parent to child. <laughs> she was the old Bergler yeah. and is now training the new Bergler. To take I'm imagining over. her as the bear version of the mom from the Goonies. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just training her kids in how to be thieves. And one of them really just took off, became one of the finest bear thieves in the world. I hoped when you mentioned there was a name of a bear, I honestly hoped that it was a bear that had been stolen from and that we were going to have <laughs> bear on bear crime. The Ugh. bear stole another bear salmon. never take bear on bear crime seriously. Yeah, they don't. Yep. It's like caught that salmon and then the bear just like 
Uh, this is a shakedown. Give me, yeah. give me, mm-hmm. give me the tail. No, give yeah. me that. No, I, I'm sure that there is got to be a story like that somewhere. But mm. yeah, so there you go. The burglar continues to uh, now that I'm now that we're positing the existence of like a whole community of burglars. Yeah, what I want is Disney to re bring back the country burglar jamboree. Wouldn't that be great? Mm, like okay. you get a bunch of tourists in there and they sing and dance and then when you leave like you have no food left all the snacks that you had in your backpack to give the kids while they wait in line mm-hmm. gone do we need a name for this bear family we have the snackaderms the snackaderms we have the bear glur but what is the larger is it the larger yes community of bear glurs mm-hmm we got the Ursa Minora and Ursa Majoris, and we've got like what the 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 Ursa fa- Familia. <laughs> oh boy, I gotta come up. We gotta come up with something good. What is a what is a group of bears called? Um, is it a, like what's what's there's that? There's got to be like oh yeah. There's a person who came up with. I read this. Yeah, I'm gonna look this up the other day. I was reading and like most of these names, like a murder of crows and stuff, all mm-hmm. come from one book that just one lady made up and released. And we're <laughs> like, this is a cool thing. All animals should have a cool word that refers to a group of them. And we just all ran with it. Yeah. It's going to be something ridiculous like a parliament. A parliament of bears? What? It's better. Oh. It's oh. It is a, a sleuth, sleuth or a sloth. A sloth of bears? Yeah. Oh. A sleuth of bears. Mm-hmm. That is deeply suspicious. <laughs> that the bear, a bunch of bears together, is called a sleuth. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So we need we need a pun on sleuth. We need to have come up with something that's you know <laughs> the um the the slippery sleuth sleuth the slippery sleuth. Mm-hmm. The the I don't know. Because a sleuth is a group, so it's the slippery sleuth. It's the sleuth. Yeah. You know the. the, it's, the I don't know. Mm. I don't know. We have to think on this. I don't okay. want to. I came up with burglar. I get you. Got to. You, you came up with burglar and snackaderm like right on the yes. spot, mm-hmm. and I got nothing for a group mm-hmm. of bears. Yep. I mean, you could also make a a, a pun. They could be the Constitution. <laughs> Why would they be the Constitution? The right to bear arms. Oh my gosh! The Constitution. <laughs> This is this is the group that is uh, that is this, the the larger burglar group is the, they belong mm-hmm. to the Constitution. Okay, they, uh, the right to bear arms. Mm-hmm. They come in, and mm-hmm. they steal your food, and break your windows and doors, and then they yep. say, "You've just been amended." Oh. <laughs> 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 uh. All right. Everyone in this room is now regretting their decision to work on this project with us. Yep. Yep. They uh you think they only started regretting right now? <laughs> At some point earlier today, they must have thought, yeah. "Wait, what are we doing?" There has to have been a point in I Octavia's de- life when agreed. she was like, "I got a business degree in marketing." And this is what I oh. have to use it. You have an English degree? Oh, and you, we can make you do anything then. Yeah. You got a useless degree like we did. Adam is in an MBA right now. Yep. Yep. And poor, this is poor what Adam. we're wasting it yep. on. There you are. Yep. Scar, 26 years in the military? Yep. 26 years in the military. And mm. now reduced to this. Now this is no, where he is. No, promoted to promoted. this. Promoted, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, so much better. It's going to be even more embarrassing no when you introduce- we have- but- such military experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we maybe need to to actively search for the burglar. Active, yeah. Search, yeah. Let's let's head to Colorado. Uh huh. Yep. A scar. We're gonna send you to Colorado <laughs> field trip. Um, We're just gonna staple sandwiches to you. <laughs> I'm gonna require a team. <laughs> <laughs> the he, he anti heist needs... team. Yep. He needs a, he needs a special team. To, okay. Uh, to to take down the burglar, we'll film him. Adam, you get to film it. Set a film crew. Well, I'm bringing it, him here for an interview, right? That's a... Yeah, okay. that's what's going on. Uh, it's it's like those Monster Hunter shows where they like all go ch- <laughs> chase Bigfoot and they run around in the woods and get scared mm-hmm. of each other, and yeah. then an actor 
you know, walks by in the darkness and they all freak out. That's that's what it'll okay. be. So that's our show. So we're hunting. Th- th- this is our. Th- this is turned from a food heist into a bad story idea. Uh, didn't you say they always do? They they always do, but this one in especially now mm. that it's like let's get a crack team of experts together to find the notorious burglar and his and, and group his constitution group his constitution yep. of thieves. Mm-hmm. National treasure part three. <laughs> Stealing what? The cherry tree that somebody <laughs> chopped down? Who was yeah. it? Was that George Washington? That was George Washington's cherry chopped tree. down the cherry tree. We know where the cherry tree is. We found it. It was replanted. If you strip off the bark from the cherry tree, it has a secret message from George Washington. <laughs> you have to find the right cherry. <laughs> and inside there's a worm. And if you can speak worm, it will tell you a secret. The secret is, which one of the um, bad story ideas and or food heists won the competition? It knows. <laughs> so we're going to feel, everyone's going to feel even more embarrassed when w- you announced to us the topic that you decided that we needed to talk about today. <laughs> okay, so let us cast our minds back a few episodes ago. I just smacked this with my finger, so I hope that... Didn't sound like a big thump on the microphone. Um, we, you, you got the the bad the box full of swag from Wizards, the yes. Magic the Gathering stuff, and we made some jokes about how we would love to get free stuff. Yes, and then it turns out that one of our listeners, uh, and and she did not give me okay. overt permission to use her name, so I won't yep. use it. Uh-huh. But she's an engineer at uh, Riot. And sent me a bunch of riot points. I bought a bunch of skins for League of Legends. You're going to hate me because <laughs> um, Riot one time asked if I'd be interested in designing a hero mm-hmm. from League of Legends. And I had never played it. So I'm like, I feel like it would be wrong of me to take that slot from someone else who would want to design a hero because I haven't played the game. So yeah. I said I passed on it respectfully. <laughs> you would You would have enjoyed that, I think. I would. Yeah. I definitely would. Hey, Riot. <laughs> the Burglar. Still open. <laughs> the Burglar's up the for- The Burglar <laughs> can be used. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in, in light of that, I thought it would be interesting if we did a whole episode that's just us kind of thinly veiled begging for stuff. Will it be interesting? No, I don't think it will be interesting. <laughs> you said it would be. Well, I, I'm hoping that it will be, but I, I don't know what this is going to go like, because maybe we've already done the joke and it's dead now. I mean, we've been doing this joke, mostly you've been doing this joke, since we were <laughs> undergraduates. Yes. So. Uh, that was, so, so we talked about how, mm-hmm. you know, back in college, we worked on a magazine. We worked on a student science fiction magazine called mm-hmm. uh, The Leading Edge. The Leading Edge. And it is uh, really great. Uh, we won some awards for cover and for various other things. I now fund some it. some fantastic stories. You Leading do? Edge. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Yes. It's part of where my salary as a professor goes. My mm-hmm. salary, I say, is it's yeah. huge. I teach one class, so it's like three grand. But goes to uh, uh, yeah. funding, uh, funding magazine. Uh, another alumnus of that magazine, Ethan Sprout, mm-hmm. uh, several years ago, he and I mm-hmm. um, got together and worked mm-hmm. with uh uvu yep and um, me and and yep. we got some money from you and from a bunch of other authors and we yeah. set up a fund uh for an endowment fund that for that and a scholarship right it, uh, well we don't have the scholarship working okay. yet but okay. we are fully funding two issues a year of uvu science fiction magazine and byu science fiction yeah. magazine so hooray uh, but when we graduated, mm-hmm. and we were all still friends, mm-hmm. not, I don't think a lot of people understand how much of Dragon Steel is just our college buddies. Yes. That we are still friends with decades later and work with every day. Um, Scar was on that magazine with us, and Peter, and, and Isaac, Isaac, and, and Karen. So all of these people. Yep. So um, we didn't want to stop working together. Mm-hmm. So we created a website. You've told the story. 
Have I created this? Okay, so Time Waster's Guide. Yep. Uh, We did that, Mm -hmm. and this is where we finally bring it back around to the topic. Um, We used that to get free stuff for years. Starting with Scar. Scar was the brilliant mind that Mm -hmm. uh, got Diablo 2, correct? Diablo 2 from Blizzard for free, and we were all like, what? And so we just started uh, the TimeWastersGuide.com, and we went around looking for companies that would send us free games and kept that going for years. Here's the thing. It felt like, honestly, just a little bit of a scam when we did it, <laughs> right? It did not not like a scam, but we were, thought we were getting away with something. It, it felt like that, but we did write yes. and post reviews of everything that people sent us. But here's the thing. We are still talking about Diablo 2 <laughs> on my podcast where now suddenly we are world famous authors Mm -hmm. and Diablo 2 has a rebuild that came out just recently. Diablo 4. No, no, not just Diablo 4. Diablo 2 had a remaster of Diablo 2. Yeah, remaster of Diablo 2. It's probably way better than Diablo 4. (laughs) That other is not going to send you anything, Dan, by the way. But they did a remaster of Diablo 2. So the person who said, I'm going to take a chance on this random magazine that probably, you know, 100 people read and mm-hmm. whatever, I'll send them a review copy. I bet that has earned them more publicity than most of the free copies that they sent out. Probably. Because here we are still talking about here it. Here we are still doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I actually s- decided to kind of resurrect this idea because Time Wasters Guide is dead and has been dead mm-hmm. for a long time. But... Uh, I started a YouTube channel where I would review role-playing games. Mm-hmm. And so for a couple of years, I was getting PDF role-playing games and occasionally hard copy from all kinds of companies all over mm-hmm. the place. Uh, and I don't have time to maintain that channel any- anymore. If you look up on YouTube, Dan mm-hmm. Wells' uh, games, you can find it. But uh, yeah, that is... I've always made sure that if people send me a free thing, that I talk about it so yep. that people are getting their promotional dollars worth. And now you want to do it some now more? Now we want to do it some more. What, okay. do you want, what do you want for free? Magic cards. Magic cards. But you already get those. Yeah, but there's new ones. There's a new set <laughs> cut coming out this week. I know. Uh-huh. And I'm going to be out of town when you do the draft of it, and I'm very sad. I want, you know... Magic cards. Okay. I mean, you know, the 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 it it's so weird to talk about this because <laughs> I I now get to be that person. Like when we do the drafts, mm-hmm. particularly the young people who come, like your kids, we just let them take their cards, right? Yeah. So when I was a kid, like even in college, getting a free pack was just like it was mind blowing. Right. So cool. And so now I am the person that provides yeah. you that. You get to be the guy that gives people free cards. But then I still like getting them in the mail. Yeah. For me. Well, and I could buy all the ones I want. But that's still, the thing. Yes. Is you can buy them all, but you could not just buy for yourself like that awesome I leather couldn't. commander playmat. That's true. I could. Or couldn't. the cool wooden box. And that's right. Because those are, I don't mm-hmm. know, just, just exclusive just swag for fancy people, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what do you want? What do I want? Yeah. Oh, man. That's I already realistically. talked about ding dongs. Realistically, what do I want? Yeah, like I mean, you know, I we we could sit here and be like, what we really like are Ferraris. <laughs> but you know what? I don't think anyone's going to send us a Ferrari, and if they did, I think I don't think I would be able to accept it because it would be too big a gift. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like there are certain things that stray into. Yeah, I can't take your Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Um, just just too much. Um, not that anyone would, no really, one would give one, yes, right? No one would, but there's, there's a line somewhere in there between Wizard of Coast sending magic cards that I'm like, yay, into, <laughs> like, I've told you the story, right? Like when, um, when the very first time I, I realized that I had, I suddenly had reach in the community. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I told, I've told this story was when Probably. at a convention, I opened the pack of magic cards. Uh, at a, a signing, and I mm-hmm. took a picture and said, hey, someone send me a pack of Magic Cards. And then I got 80 packs at the next signing. Mm-hmm. That made me feel like, you know, I, I, right? Yeah. I don't, I, I love Wizard sending me Magic Cards, 
but fans sending you fans, magic cards. Uh, like a card that they bring and sign for me is great. Like a 15 cent card, but mm -hmm. spending a lot of money on packs for somebody who can buy all the packs that they want, um, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't want the fans to be doing that. I would rather them be, you know, like pick one card that costs 15 cents and sign it for me. That's a better yeah. gift to me than a pack of magic cards. It's mm -hmm. personal from them. Uh, things like that. Like that's what I've kind of requested instead. If you want to give me something, give me something like that. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to buy me anything. Uh, I do, it is cool when people bring me like, you know, something that's uh, that's special to them. Like I sometimes get challenge coins, uh, military mm -hmm. challenge coins, or I sometimes people will bring me like, you know, here's a thing from my hometown. That stuff is cool uh, when I get yeah. those at signings. But um, but you don't need to need to buy me the things that we're begging for um here <laughs> yes let's let's be clear mm -hmm. uh dear listeners yep if you work for a company that provides something yes then yes it is it is not a huge expense then that's okay right yep. like uh the person that sent me the riot points yep they actually give their employees a bunch of riot points specifically to use as gifts to yep. fans mm -hmm. so love that um, whereas if it's just you like reading our books and you want to, you know, buy me a bunch of ding dongs, then I'll kind of feel bad because I'm taking advantage of you. But if you work for Hostess and you get free ding dongs anyway, then sure, I'll accept those. Ding dongs. This is okay. Well, these are all things you've mentioned before. You pitched this topic. Obviously, you have a list of things that you want. Oh, man. I don't. That's the problem. <laughs> I said I had an idea for a topic. I didn't say I had any follow-up. That you did any planning at all? Have, have I talked about my new computer? No. Okay. I know I've told you, but I don't think I've, on the show, uh -huh. talked about my new computer. So when I started working here, I was given a budget for computer equipment. Yes. And I bought an iPad, because that's what I do all my writing on. Yep. And I've been using that for months. And there's still been this fairly significant budget for office computer mm -hmm. just kind of burning a hole in my pocket. And so last month sometime, I went into Best Buy and I said, here's my budget. Build me the best gaming PC you can. Mm -hmm. And they built me an absolutely ridiculous, incredible gaming PC. And my justification for this mm -hmm. is that maybe one day we'll do an episode where you make me play Elden Ring, right? Right, sure. That's a, that's a great way to, you know. we've talked about it. I would take a gaming laptop if there were a company out there that wanted to send me one. Uh, and the reason I say this is I have a gaming PC mm -hmm. and my gaming PC turned into our PC that we use to, um, to do all of this. Oh, okay. It, it got eaten up by the company because we needed one <laughs> and I wasn't using it at the moment. And then my son stole my gaming chair and my gaming desk and put his gaming PC on it. So I no longer have a gaming PC. Okay. And I was talking to Ben. Yes. And Ben said, no one does desktop PCs anymore, even for gaming, Brandon. They do laptops. But my laptop is not a gaming laptop. It doesn't mm -hmm. have a dedicated video card. Um, and so, you know, I can't game on that. The thing is, I say this, the next time I can play a video game, it's probably... July of next year <laughs> might be might be December January mm -hmm. when I, like, like I might take some time after I finish first draft but I might need to go straight into second draft of Stormlight Five mm -hmm. uh, in order to to meet our deadlines. Hit the deadlines. So Baldur's Gate Three don't get to play yet. Uh, Starfield somebody is yeah that's, um, Adam's gonna that's play that tonight. Adam just waiting for us to shut up so we can go play Starfield. Yep that uh, that that I can maybe do in July. Hades Two should be out by then. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, I've got quite the list. I'll yeah. be able to pick one of them. Armor Core. So see, well, and that's the thing is now that I have a nice computer, mm -hmm. like I don't play games that require good graphics because I've mm -hmm. never had a good computer. Yeah, my favorite game is League of Legends. That's you know a fourteen-year-old client that okay. has relatively low graphic requirements. Mm -hmm. um, this thing can run just ludicrous levels of graphics. Game I am eternal. Uh, I put in uh, PUBG mm -hmm. and it's just insane how good that looks when you crank all the settings way up. Okay. So what I'm looking for now 
is games. Is I want to play all these games I've never been able to play. Uh huh. Like uh, Red Dead Redemption and okay. Assassin's Creed. Okay. And those kind of things. Mm. I uh, I want to play the new God of War. I never played the old ones. They didn't look like I've my style. I've never played of any of the God of War. But I've either. heard the new ones really good. So mm-hmm. so yeah, I, you know. Maybe maybe you can get someone who wants to give you one of these games that works at one of the companies. That works at one of these companies. Yeah. If you don't work at one of these companies, don't send us free yeah, stuff. Yeah, just make Brandon pay for it yeah. somehow. Just somehow make that a thing. Yes, Dragon Steel, foot the bill. I also was able to uh, talk our head of uh, operations into giving me a, a recurring budget for podcast research. Yes, going to movies. Which is what I use to go to movies. Yeah. Yes. But so. I, I assume at some point, if you ever make me play Elden Ring, yeah, you would have that to that's use where this. that budget yeah. would come from. That, that, that's great. Uh, we are going to watch <laughs> RRR tomorrow. You are? I am so excited. So here's the thing. You weren't, you weren't here. We are going to watch it after writing group. <gasps> we're going to watch it. We're going to do writing group and we're going to get done and the whole writing early, group's going to go And over. the whole writing group's going to go and we're going to watch it in two parts because uh, Alan has to has his kid here and has to leave at 11. So at 9.30, we're going to watch the first half of RRR and then next week, next we're going to watch gonna the watch second, second half. half. Yeah. So, okay. so you now know when RRR is happening. I'm so excited. I won't mm-hmm. be here next week because I'm going to be gone. You'll be here tomorrow though, I'll right? I'll be here tomorrow. So you can introduce us, mm-hmm. us to RRR. Yeah. Assuming you want to stay until 11. But. Uh, I absolutely do for yeah. RRR. Yeah. I am not kidding when I say that that has gone up into my top five movies now huh? of all time. You're not the only one. Lots of people uh, really love it. Mm-hmm. So. so you can't think of any other places that you would want to give you... I don't know. Like, I always want role-playing games. Okay. But I don't... Other than this show, I don't really have an outlet to promote them anymore. Hmm. But if somebody sends you something, then yeah. you will mention it on this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would. Would you take a sponsorship from Lukewarm Coca-Cola? Lukewarm Coca-Cola. Lukewarm Coca-Cola comes and says, we're going to send you 12 packs Luke of warm Coke. Lukewarm Coke Zero. All you have to do is go on the podcast, and you have to uh, always have your Coca-Cola in frame, and you have to repeatedly say, wow, that's a refreshingly warm Coca-Cola. <laughs> Would you do that? Uh, I would do that. I don't think that they would appreciate refreshingly warm as a tagline. (laughs) You know, (laughs) refreshing may be the wrong term. Tepidly warm? Mm -hmm. Delightfully. That's a tepidly warm. Comfortingly warm. Comfortingly warm. Like your mother's embrace (laughs) in sudsy cola form. Mm Mm-hmm. No. Last time we recorded, mm. we had these new cool mugs that say, how's that yeah. been on them? And I poured my Coke into that so mm. that it wouldn't be quite as shameless of a shill. And you, then I forgot. I left it up in my office. And so now I'm just drinking out of the can like a barbarian. Trying to think of things that I know you love. Bacon. Bacon. Big Bacon gave you mm. a sponsorship. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, um, a lot of if you if you hit the New York Times list your publisher will usually give you wine right yep yep. except we don't drink wine and so i assume they send you like weird fruit or something they send me steaks they send you steaks i tried i tried to get them to send me magic cards (laughs) i legitimately said don't send me a bottle of wine buy me a a box you know like Mm -hmm. the collector booster like they so buy me one of those they couldn't figure it out they're like i don't know which ones to get you brandon like you'd have to pick it out for yourself that's not cool well, what about steaks? So they send me steaks now. Okay. But what I actually wanted them to do is like, like when I wanted them to buy me a Black Lotus when our Memory of Light hit number one, I told the publicist that's what they should do. They still sent me they steaks. They didn't do yeah, it. They didn't do uh, it. When I hit the Times list mm-hmm. for the Partial series, yep. uh, Harper didn't actually send me anything. Oh. So come on, Harper Collins. Uh, but my agent signed me up for a year-long subscription to the Bacon of the Month Club. Okay. And that was wonderful. What about swords? Swords. Yes. There's lots of people who sell and make swords. Mm -hmm. Do you want people to send you swords? Do you you want to get cutlery in the mail? Cutlery in the mail. Mm -hmm. Um, My father collects historical swords. Uh Uh-huh. But what I want is a Klingon batleth. Oh, you know, I have a batleth story. You have a Batleth story? I went to Dragon Con 
um, a number of years ago. And I bought myself, again, it's a magic card. I brought uh, my first piece of power, mm -hmm. um, a, a Mox Pearl. The next time I went, I said, I'm going to buy you something this time, Emily. What do you want? Because she wasn't going with me. She said, I want a Batleth. <laughs> I'm like, seriously? She's like, yeah, get me a Batleth. I want a Batleth. They did not have a Batleth for sale anywhere. Anywhere at Dragon at Con. At Dragon Con. No Batleths. What? So I think that what had happened is there had been official licensed ones. Then they had cease and desisted everybody who made unofficial ones. And then the official licensed one went away. So you, there were no... I searched yeah. the entire place for a Batleth for my wife. What year was this? Uh, this was early teens. Okay. Yeah. Because these days you can find batliths all over the place. Yeah. Anyone that sells swords at a con has, has batliths on their table. So maybe they are, now that there's no yeah. licensed one, maybe they're all knockoffs or maybe there's a license you can get. I haven't seen licensed ones anywhere. Okay. Um, but, you know, there's five Star Trek shows in active development right yeah. now. So at and, some point. And maybe that's the thing. It was before this kind of new Trek resurgence mm -hmm. and uh, they had... The movie's going on, but there's no Batleth really in that. Uh, and so yeah. maybe, but I could not find my wife a Batleth. I have failed as a husband you failed to provide a Batleth for Emily. So uh, we recently here have shaken up the offices yeah. that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got Adam's old office. Uh huh. And then they the, the people came to me and said, mm -hmm. how should we decorate this for you and make it yeah. your own thing? And I made a bunch of normal requests, like, can I have orange curtains and some plants? Mm -hmm. And I made some ridiculous requests, like, can we please put a manacled skeleton hanging from the wall? They said yes to that one, though I don't have it yet. Okay. Uh, I also asked, can we please hang a batleth, a ceremonial batleth on the wall? And I never heard back. Mm. I don't know if they're, like, planning to get me one or if they're just like, no, of course we're not going to give you a batleth, you idiot. But... Yeah, like a really nice one, like Kaelas's Batleth, the rune sword version. Okay. That would look so cool hanging so, there. You would take a Batleth if Star Trek sent you one. If Star Trek sent me anything, I would oh, take it. Any Star Trek stuff. There's literally no Star Trek thing you could send me that I would not be delighted by. I would be the same way. I would totally take Star Trek stuff. Yeah. Whatever tar Star Trek swag was sent to me, I would be, I would be happy with. Like they could send me here... This is the the paper cup that Patrick Stewart drank coffee out of on set. I would still be totally over the top excited about something that stupid. Problem is that's good money. I mean, they can sell that. I know they can. Um, so yeah, and I don't know what else they do. Like they there isn't like a ton of Star Trek merch out there. Is the problem? I don't know. They've got to have merch. They got to have T-shirts and things. Uh, they, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they do have T-shirts. Yeah, because I own several Star Trek T-shirts. Do you have like the T-shirt that has like the like the officer's T-shirt or the? No, mm -hmm. uh, but I do have a shoulder bag that is. Uh, does, oh. it looks like one of the command yep. uniforms, and it mm -hmm. has pips on it that you can like choose what rank you are. One of my favorite stories about this is one of the first times we went to WorldCon. Mm -hmm. Um, was in as often happens at these conventions. A hotel where the elevators really couldn't support the amount of people who wanted to go up at the same times, right? Mm -hmm. Like obviously the hotel can support all these people, yeah. but at when there's a world con, you'll all get out of say the Hugo Awards at the same time and all want to go back to your rooms at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, things would let out even during the day and that would but create this huge problem at the elevators. Yeah. And it was a really frustrating problem because people would just jump in and just, it was a mass chaos. There was no whatever. And uh, it was super frustrating until one day, like the second day I walked down and Starfleet was directing traffic. <laughs> it was a group of people in their Starfleet uniforms organizing lines and all the nerds just listened to them. Uh, other people who had said, you know, don't don't get, you know, trying to organize. They just ignore them. But when Starfleet arrived, everybody lined Everyone up. toes the line. And everybody got in their elevators the right way and got, it was so nice. Um, so I'm really happy that Starfleet uh, showed up to direct traffic. So um, one year, actually two or three years, I went to Kineticon. 
mm-hmm. uh, which is the little Comic Con in Connecticut. Yep. And th- I was on the seventh floor. I think the green room was on like the thirteenth floor. Uh huh. And the elevators were a nightmare the entire mm-hmm. weekend. And so I needed some lunch, and I went to the hotel and realized, oh, there's the line is it's going to take me a half an hour. I should probably just walk up to the green room. And then I thought, is it going to be worth it? I said, well, okay, I'll I'll try it. So I walked up 13 floors, and there in the green room was George Takai and Nichelle Nichols, and I got to sit down and chat with them for like a half an hour while we ate lunch together. So, yeah. Uh, it George, was awesome. is it, is it Takai or Takai? Takai, probably Takai. Takai. George Takai is the only one that I have ever met, and he was... Absolutely charming. Yeah. Uh, just hugely delightful human being. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's very nice. But yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. There's got to be something else that we... You, what do you want to ask for? You started this. I, 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 I started this because I thought maybe you would have something interesting to say about it. <laughs> Is it, is that, that, that's how this goes? Yeah. Yeah, and I could buy anything I want. <laughs> if I want it, I have it. Except for more magic cards. I mean, the things that I want are things you can't li- really beg for. I really, really want. If, if, I, if I could snap my fingers and have like one selfish thing, mm-hmm. right? It would be to be on what they call the Bel Air Circuit. Oh, to get the movies. So this is when you get first run movies as they come out. Mm-hmm. You have to have like an industry standard screening room and you have to be part of the industry, the entertainment industry. They don't consider look at books as part of the entertainment industry, even though we are. Yeah. Um, and you have to have a, a really nice projector, uh, which I which I, which I did. Have. I bought all of this stuff hoping that someday I could get on the Bel Air circuit so I could have first run movies to show, you know, mm-hmm. for my family and friends when when they come out. Yeah. That's the thing that I would most want. But I mean, it is possible because there are a bunch of people in Utah in it, but they all live in Park City and they, you know, mm-hmm. uh, they're directors and people like that. So it it's much easier to do or it's it's viable to do in Utah than it would be, you know, in a yeah. lot of other places uh because of uh, of Park City and Sundance and things like that. But um, I have not yet been able to quite make it work out. So that's, but that's the sort of thing you can't, you know, yeah. go on here like, you know, Say, hey, get me on the, get take, me on the Bel Air circuit. Take me to the rich guy island. Yes, take me to the rich guy island. Um, I, I would you take an island if someone gave it to you? An island? Like they gave you an island and you have to keep it maintained and stuff. You can't just sell it. You got to keep the island going. Keep the well. It depends on how big the island is, right? Yeah. Because up in like Puget Sound. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who was given an island by mm-hmm. her parents, uh-huh. and it's like a rock that pokes up. It's like two feet in diameter. Oh, that is sweet. And that's her island that she has. I would much rather have that island because I don't think I would get a, get used <laughs> out of a different island, right? Like, I did like a it, Pacific Northwest island that I could have a little house on and go there and write. I would use that all the time. Would you really? Oh yeah. How often can you like leave your family and go away? Like, well, I mean, my kids are getting old. Yeah, you've my... got you've got a your youngest is like the age of one of my young ones. Yeah, but you know, ten years and she's going to college. Yeah. On the other hand, Gen Z will never be able to afford homes, so yeah. my kids might be living with me forever. At which point, I would welcome the chance <laughs> you need an, you to need... go to a different house. You need an island to write. go live on. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Okay, so here's a question. Yeah. Um, speaking not of swag, not of merch, okay. but of opportunity. Oh. Okay. Yes. Um, I would, frankly, jettison my entire career if given the opportunity to write for a Star Trek TV show. Is there... It would be a bad choice, but it's a choice I'd probably make. Uh-huh. Is there a property, a world, a universe that you would like to write for? Uh, I already did this. Well, you don't just say magic again. No, no, no. I, I, I have, but I have gone and done all the ones I want to do. The Wheel okay. of Time was the one that I always said mm-hmm. that I would do, right? Mm-hmm. And then it happened. Yeah. Um, and magic, I went and did. They came to me and said, would you write a story? And I said, yes, but you can't pay me, and I write whatever I want. <laughs> um, 
and uh, and I did. And they actually published yours. They did. They didn't publish yours, though. Yours is very good. Thank you. Um, is there another property? Uh, not really. Um, I don't think there's another property that I there that that I would do. Um, if we were went back in time, and it was a chance to do Star Wars, like actually write one of the films mm-hmm. before they did the reboots, and I were put in charge of it, then I would have said yes. Okay. Um, but not anymore. But these days. Now, it's just everyone in their... There's too many Star Wars movies. Too many Star Wars things yep. already. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sure people who are doing them will do good jobs with them and mm-hmm. things. Like, I I am not needed in yeah. that realm, so... Okay. Um, so and there's I no IP that you're like, I just really want to get my hands on this. I want to make Mulder and Scully kiss. Nope. Like... I oh, heard a gasp from the corner. <laughs> there, there really isn't. Okay. Uh, there, there, like I, I am much more happy in my own worlds mm-hmm. than I would be in any of those. Okay. Um, would you go to space? Um, so would I go to space? Yeah. You get called right now, and you're like, "Hey, uh, we're taking the tourists up to space. We heard that uh, Dan, that you like space, that it's a thing that you're fond of. Uh, would you like to be in space?" Ooh, just like one of these space tourism things. Yep. Like, we'll go into low Earth orbit. Yep. And I don't, I genuinely don't know. Because I don't love flying. Mm. I don't think that the the experience of blasting off and then falling back to Earth would be tolerable enough for me to enjoy being outside of the atmosphere for 20 minutes or whatever mm. it is. Because I probably would have to say no also until the safety of them is high enough that, like, I can't take huge risks when my yeah. kids are young and also mm-hmm. when my series is unfinished. Yeah. Um, there are too many responsibilities there. You don't so, want to implode on the bottom of the sea. Yeah. Well, Stormlight Archive remains unfinished. Yep. Okay. But once... Book 10 of Stormlight Archive comes out. No, no, no. Let's go implode on the bottom of the sea. Last uh, last book of Mistborn. Last book of comes Mistborn. After, oh, comes okay. after. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be Shatner's age before I can, uh, before I can go. Yeah. Maybe then it'll be really but, safe. You know, he got to do it. So he did. There you go. Well, Ben, what do you want people to give you for free? 